All right, so let's discuss how to punish butt scooters systematically. So this is my finals here at the Nogi Advanced Division at Revolution 52. I'm going against a really strong leg locker. Um, this guy's been on the scene for a very long time. But today we're going to talk about how to avoid those leg entanglements while passing, how to maximize your passing efficiency, and overall how to manage that threat level. All right, so he goes ahead and pulls guard. Now I'm really going to reveal and expose everything about my game. So if you guys could go ahead and subscribe and we can make this an even exchange, I'd appreciate that. But most of my passes are going to start off here as I walk to the left side. And, you know, talking about threat level, when I walk off to this left side, it's just enough for him to have to respect it and fall to a hip, but not enough for him to re-square. So he goes ahead and puts one leg on the ground. And now I'm going to cut the other way. I post my hand on the shin here. As I curve the foot inward, I drop my shoulder onto his top shin and I circle my body to the other side. Now getting into maximizing your passing efficiency. If I'm not going to pass the guard, I want to be creating as much wear and tear down on my opponent as possible. So as I circle here, notice how my opponent really has to raise his hips and throw this high leg back in. This takes a lot of energy out of him. And while he regarded there throughout the match, you're going to see how much damage this is actually doing to him and how that sets us up for safe passes later in the round. Now, I'm not actually like I'm I'm going for passes, but I'm not committing too hard on these. I'm not pushing too far forward because I don't want to overcommit myself. And I think one thing that's very important from both top and bottom, either passing or playing guard, you want to be controlling the pace. You don't necessarily have to be winning each exchange, but you want to be controlling the pace of each exchange. So if you guys watched round one against Korea, I talked about something where I don't like fully committing to north-south because it gives them the option to escape both left and right. And in this match, I actually do get punished for it here. Now, obviously, this is something the Rotolos do a lot, so it's not bad. I just feel like for me, it's a little more risky. And that's because, in my opinion, it's just a little less predictable. And in this case, my opponent goes out the opposite side. I'm late to the reaction, and he's able to win that exchange and start entangling my legs. So from here, my only idea is just to free my knee line. You can see me using my left foot to press up against the underside of his knee. And that's just kind of keeping his legs wide and allowing my knee to stay off of his hips. So at this point, I've had time to feel my opponent out. I know he's a competent leg locker, and he has a really good guard. His reactions are very fast, and they're very accurate. So as I'm... So I'm going to start to turn it up and bring in these really heavy knee cuts. Now, what's interesting about my passing is I try to, the theory I have on it is I'm using the outside passes to try to set up the knee cuts, right? So as I cut to the outside, he now has to worry about me running to the left or the right, and he starts to spread his defenses out. My goal here is just to put a threat on every side of the board. So I have north-south pass running to the left. I have slash pass running to the right. I have knee cuts going on top. And then right there, I just had uh, guillotine and headlock threats um, cutting off to the top side. So I just want to spread his defenses out as much as I can. So doing this not only prevents him from really being able to engage and initiate attacks on me because he's having to defend such a wide area, but it's also helping me mentally. I'm stacking up my advantages over him and really getting him worried about every angle. But now we're going to see the slash pass number two here. And notice how much slower he is on the reaction and how much more power I have behind that guard pass. He really has to strain his body and raise the hips up in order to meet me back on that on that front there. Now look at the chain between using the slash pass on the right, then the left, and then following that up with a knee cut. So I'm just berating him with guard passing attempts. And so normally my knee cut is like my heavy hitter, and I committed a lot into that pass. But my opponent did a good job keeping his hips up and raising me up to his torso. So I off balance myself and I end up falling over. From here, he's able to collect a sweep and stand up for two points. But as I stand back up, I realize you're going to see he he goes for these double palm grips. And I know that's like a telltale sign that he's going to pull guard. So immediately as I feel that, I'm shooting back in on a low ankle pick. And the ref is going to give me two points for that. So next is going to be the most beautiful slash pass I've ever pulled off in a tournament. Okay, so let's break that down. I'm going to start off once again on the left side of the hip. That bottom leg touches the floor, so that's my opening to go. I circle over and notice how low my head is and how my feet are driving weight into my opponent. So I'm battling this bottom leg with my torso and the top leg is being framed away with my elbow. And this is the most important part here. Notice as my opponent raises his hips and he goes to throw this top leg in, I raise my head, I shoot my hips in, and this kind of creates a wall. And as his high leg tries to come in, there's nothing to latch onto. So it just falls off. And when the high leg falls off, so do the hips. So also notice my legs here. I'm on my toes. And I don't think sprawling is the right word. I think flaring. Like I'm really applying pressure into my opponent using my legs and using my chest here. And that's ultimately what's going to allow me to collapse the hips in the opposite direction. And once I have the hips facing away from me, I'm going to use my right hand to cover the knee, cover the hips, and pass the guard. Hey, real quick, if you guys like the techniques you're seeing in the videos, consider joining my YouTube channel membership. 
For less than the cost of your morning Starbucks drink, you'll gain access to exclusive monthly short instructionals. Available to you right now is Slash Passing and Kiss the Dragon. Join now and support me while making massive improvements in your jiu-jitsu. Now I learned this next little tech from Owen Jones. You're gonna see me use my right hand here to go to the inside of the bicep. And this kind of prevents my opponent from turning to the left side because I'm pinning his shoulder with my elbow. Eventually he tries to free his arm, so I raise my arm past it. And now I'm gonna to try to recross face him um, with the arm trapped. And that's gonna allow me to get a lot of control from this position, but he ends up bridging into me. So I try to switch sides. And this is where I get a really gnarly grip here. So I have a claw grip under his head and notice my right arm. My elbow is pocketed on his ankle and I'm using my chest to compress down the knee as my right hand pulls the hips in. So this basically, this entire setup right now I ha that I have, it he can only go to the left side. There's no more turning into me. I'm covering almost his entire body and pressuring down on that side. Now obviously he's aware that I'm trying to force him over to that left side so he'll expose his back. But he's smart to it so he continues to try to push back into the right side and I'll eventually let the grips go in exchange for knee on belly which will give me two points so I'm at a five to two lead now after i score from that i'm going to move over into north south and begin working to take his back so as he goes to turn into me i'm going to sprawl my legs out and start running around to face him my left hand here is going right under his elbow and i'm kind of hooking with my wrist under his armpit and that's going to allow me to get a strong grip under his under his tricep and start to force him to expose his back also you can see the reappearance of my right arm on the inside position of his bicep pinning his bicep to that side and preventing him from really being able to bridge out to the left. As my opponent goes to turtle here, I'm gonna scoop grip on his bicep and force my elbow into his spine, which makes it very hard for him to turtle up to his knees. And now I have back exposure, so I'm gonna start working to a gift wrap and looking to take the back. You can see my right hand raising here to catch the arm and I snap, I use my left arm to snap his wrist into my hand and I hop over to get one hook in. Now I'm extending him and I'm really sending a lot of hip pressure through as I choke up on that gift wrap. I can feel his hand go low to start blocking the hook, but as he does that, I send the hook really high and chop down to trap his arm. From here, we're just taking the blade of our thumb and using our head to actually press his head into that blade of our thumb, and that's what's gonna start digging under the neck. Um, my left hand here, I'm not quite able to, to get a and as he starts trying to peel off my arm from under his neck, I sit up onto my elbow here, and instead I'm gonna go for this gable grip, which will give me a little more power to drive that choke through. So gable grip, and I'm able to get the tap and win my first ever advanced division. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to see more. Also, if you guys are interested in learning my passing techniques, consider joining my YouTube channel as a member. Right now I have my slash passing instructional as well as a kiss the dragon as a bonus. So thank you guys for watching and go pass some guards.